before we get into a lot of the technical details of special relativity and some of the weird effects that happen, there's a tool that will be extremely helpful for us to visualize what's actually happening in these systems. And that tool is a space-time diagram. And these space-time diagrams will help us understand how different observers in different frames of reference perceive space and time. And you draw these diagrams very simply by just drawing a, a coordinate axis. Uh, this will be our uh, space, our spatial direction, and this is our time direction, which is flipped from how, how you often see it in introductory physics applications. But we also know that there's more than one spatial direction. We're only drawing one here because if we included all of the spatial directions, it would have to be a four-dimensional figure, and those are very difficult to draw. So we'll just look at one spatial direction and our time direction. So in this, in this system, if we have someone who in this frame of reference is just standing still, then their space-time trajectory uh, will just be a straight vertical line. So this is at rest. As time goes on, their spatial position isn't going to be changing, so we just draw their space-time trajectory uh, as a vertical line. If, in this frame of reference, we have someone that's moving, well, then that space-time trajectory is going to be somewhat sloped. As time goes on, they're moving in space. And if they're moving faster, the faster that they move, the more sloped this line is going to be. So. So this observer would be moving faster and this, this uh, person or particle or whatever we're looking at would be moving slower. The, the more sloped it is, the more sloped downward it is, the faster that person is actually going. And there's one other thing that we're also going to do to help simplify this picture of, of what's happening in these space-time diagrams. So if I draw another I draw another axis, there's our spatial direction, and here's our time direction t. Instead of using time as just in, in regular units like seconds, we're going to cheat a little bit and add a c onto this time. So instead of this axis being just time, it's the speed of light times time. And what that effectively does is rescales these axes such that if we have a, a particle that's moving at the speed of light, or you know just a beam of light or something like that, then the trajectory that it will have on the space-time diagram will be a diagonal line at 45 degrees. So both of these are going to be 45 degrees. And th we do this just so we don't have to have some extremely flat-looking thing because light travels very fast. We, we rescale this so we can really talk about things moving close to the speed of light. Another way of, of visualizing what this does is it says that we're going to rescale C so that it's moving at, on this diagram, a velocity of 1. We could call that 1 meter per second. We know it doesn't actually travel at 1 meter per second. It travels at uh, 300 million meters per second. But what this will allow us to do is when we go through and get some, some equation that depends on how fast you're going, your velocity v, then whenever we get a v in our equation using, using this setup, we can write that as v over 1 meter per second. So when we change that back to real units, we're going to take all the v's in our equation and replace them with v over c. But this, this whole part here is, uh, is a little bit math technical. You don't really need to worry about this picture of it very much. Just when we look, use CT on this axis, we're going to say that light is always going to travel on diagonal lines. And this will greatly simplify our equations and our, and our understanding of this picture when we start looking at the weird effects of special relativity, which we will do in the next video.